<laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, I'm Lauren Clisby. I work at TNO. Uh, TNO is an indep independent research organization here in the Netherlands. Uh, we do everything from um, quantum computing to healthy living. Uh, I work specifically in the energy and materials transition. So we work in the energy transition from fossil fuels to green energy. Uh, and just a quick quote, Mark Rutte, the last prime minister of the Netherlands, compared the transition in the Netherlands to the efforts of rebuilding after the World War, so World War II. Uh, so that's a little bit of <laughs> what we're up against. So what kind of questions are we trying to answer? Um, investment decisions on the energy infrastructure, the impact of the generation mix, demand, different energy prices, and other factors, uh, impact of policy targets, uh, which is really important for the government to know, um, level of security of supply of the system, so if we're completely reliant on renewables, what happens if there's no sun or wind, um, and, uh, and of course um, the grid itself going down, and for cross-border connections with, say, Germany um, and the Scandinavian countries, so how do those things affect our system? So where there are a lot of decisions to be made and money, then you have modeling. So we have uh, energy system optimization modeling is what I work in. Very basically, you have two problems. You have the investment problem, which is how should we build up the energy system for the minimum cost? Uh, your input is then your current system, your future demand, and what options you have for building up. And your output is then the new system and how much that costs to build. Then you have your dispatch problem, which is how will an energy system function throughout the year to satisfy demand, also for the minimum cost, because it's an optimization. Um, so then you give it the system that you just built and the expected weather and demand profiles for a year usually. Um, so your weather and your demand. And then you get out production, where it happened, where things were converted, and your transport through the network, and your storage. So you just see how the whole system functioned over time. So why is this difficult? Well, this is just a toy problem. This just shows electricity. But you could also have gas. You should also have hydrogen. Uh, you could also have heat. Uh, those systems interact with each other. They have different levels of technology detail that you may want to include, uh, depending on what you're looking at. Um, I said the Netherlands, but you could also be looking at all of Europe, for instance. And the biggest dimension that we have is time. So if you solve this once, you would just know if your total energy for the year satisfied your total demand, but that doesn't tell you anything about time. So if you wanted to solve on, say, a monthly basis, you have to solve 12 times. And if you want to solve on a yearly basis by the hour, you would have to solve it 8,760 times. And if you want to do multi-year analysis, which a lot of people do, then you multiply that by how many years you want to do, and the problem starts getting very large. So if you've worked in optimization, you may be thinking, that's maybe too big to solve. And the answer is yes. If we actually include all of the details that we want to include, uh, the optimization is too big to solve. So then we have to find ways of simplifying. So uh, take this elephant, for example. You could probably simplify this image a bit, and you could still know that it's an elephant. It still looks like an elephant. But if you simplify further, then it starts not looking like an elephant anymore. So this is sort of the game that we're playing of trying to simplify where we can, but not simplify so much that it no longer looks like what we're trying to model. Um, some models do this which is to just focus on the thing that you're looking at, but then you don't see the full picture. Uh, what we'd really like to do is this, which is low resolution, where you don't really need it, maybe medium resolution, where you kind of do, and then high resolution, where you really, where you're specifically looking. So this is what Tulipa Energy Model, which is the project that we work on, is very good at. Uh, it's good at balancing uh, precision, but also having simplification where you, can, uh, where you need it. So three innovations that we have that do that. One is with uh, time resolution. These are my colleagues who developed this, so if you're wondering what the pictures are. Um, normally, time resolution is either hourly or maybe, uh, sorry, maybe 
uh, you can have multiples, but those multiples have, uh, you can have multi-hour, but they have to be multiples of each other. So usually you just have to pick one time resolution and then you're stuck with that for your entire model. We have fully flexible time resolution, which means that you can change the time resolution for different parts of your model and you can scale it up or down depending on the type of detail that you need. So ways that this is useful is if you want to have different time resolutions for different energy carriers, electricity usually needs to be on very high resolution, whereas maybe heat can be on like six hourly resolution. Um, you can do it by your geographical region. So if you're specifically looking at the Netherlands, you maybe want high resolution for certain things and then lower resolution as you work the array out without completely removing them from the model. And you can do it by time horizon. So you could say this year I care about higher resolution, but as I look to the future, then I can go to lower resolution. And you can combine them if you want to. So you could have really high resolution for electricity in the Netherlands and then have lower resolution. Anyway, so you can combine them, which is also great. Uh, representative days is a method of reducing also the problem, the, s the size of the problem by instead of solving for each individual day, you group them. So you say like all hot days, I'm just going to solve them as the same thing. All cold days are the same thing. Um, the thing is you're playing a game between how many days you have, which better represents your data. Uh, but the fewer days, the more computational gain that you uh, have. So uh, we use a method that better represents the data because instead of throwing the uh, days into a certain bin, you actually make them a blend of the different bins that you choose. Uh, we didn't invent blending, but actually the method that we use does a better job. So a standard method is on the left, the original data is in the center, and our method is on the right. So you can see basic because example that the data is much better represented. And we have a compact core formulation. So where you're dealing in optimization, you have a certain number of constraints and variables. And our formulation reduces the total number of constraints and variables to solve the same problem, uh, which just means any problem that you're dealing with is in a smaller size to begin with, which allows you to scale to larger problems uh, if you want to. And, you're, and it solves faster. So uh, this is Julia. Let's talk about some Julia. Uh, in case all of this lack of code is making you itchy, you can go check out our repo. We use uh, Tulip Energy model as our core repository. This is what builds and runs the optimization model. Tulipa clustering runs the blended representative periods that I talked about. And Tulipa IO is our script based uh, data manipulation because uh, the way that the model runs is highly dependent on your data and we don't really give them a GUI, so they need to prepare their data. And these are the dependencies that they run on. So Tulipa is using data frames, Jump, which we're super happy about, which is why we picked uh, Julia, and GraphsJL. Uh, Tulipa clustering uh, and is using clustering and distances, and DuckDB is uh, a open source database manager that Tulipa IO uses. We also are very happy with all of these packages. Bestie template is a template uh, package for your uh, best practices uh, developed by Abel in the audience. We're testing, documenter, benchmarks, <coughs> Julia Registrator. And we're going to do our visualizations in Pluto. So we're looking forward to that, but it's not included yet. The pros and cons. So we're really happy about the speed and efficiency. We're researchers, so we're not programmers. We needed help uh, getting started. <coughs> so it's nice how user-friendly it is, but it's also uh, very fast. We need efficiency because of the size of problems we're dealing with. Straightforward syntax, like I just said. It's super friendly. Uh, jump is a major gain. Uh, we also slightly considered Rust and then realized they don't have optimization and it takes way too long to program in and uh, all of the nice packages like DuckDB and Documenter and everything. Uh, things we've had a little bit of challenges with is you can get the speed and memory uh, efficiency, but you need to know what you're doing in order to get it. <coughs> uh, how to optimize memory use isn't exactly um, self-evident. Uh, sometimes you don't know when allocation is happening. Compilation can be slow and recompiling is annoying even when you change like minor things. 
errors in debugging, the stack trace is way too long. <coughs> Even when you have a small error, it can give you a huge stack trace. And with interoperability, we've run into <coughs> sometimes the other packages are Python based and then, <coughs> sorry, and then they don't have very good Julia support. And because Julia is a less popular language, it's less of a priority for them to support it. <clears throat> so just really quick, we had this, um, this is a good example of like the size of problem that we're dealing with <clears throat> as far as variables and constraints. But it also shows that our initial code, <clears throat> which took 314 seconds and 32 gigabytes of RAM to run, once we switched to data frames and sort of refactored to uh, get more savings, then we uh, got down to 86 seconds and 18 gigabytes. So that's like a uh, example of the first way that we did it didn't actually uh, go fast and uh, fast enough. So we had to spend this time to really optimize how Julia is happy to do this type of problem. And here's my lovely team. We have TNO, um, the Netherlands eScience Center uh, is also here. They're a software engineering company that helps researchers to do better code because we're all researchers and we don't know how. And we're also working with TU Delft and Utrecht University <coughs> on the innovations that we're incorporating into LIPA. So that's all. Very quick. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Do we have any, any questions? Yeah, maybe one quick question. Um, I saw you first. So uh, for all your energy models, do you depend on other packages which implement these models or are they all like homemade? Uh, how can you, like, which models do you implement and what features? Sorry, what do you mean? Like your modeling, I assume, your generators, the electricity grid, maybe the heat markets, all these kinds of things. Um, there are a lot of packages in Julia already, for example, to model power flows mm. in a grid, or like, do you have your own uh, formulation for that, or do you depend on older packages? So I should have specified this isn't uh, physics modeling. So this is a more uh, large scale system model where we don't take into, we just generalize, we don't take into account like complex system physics. So instead of having, uh, yeah, your like heat dynamics and your electricity dynamics and things like that, it's more of a Amsterdam has this much electricity production from these types of sources and it can transport it to Rotterdam. So it's really like large scale. We have certain constraints that account a bit for uh, physics, but not in the level of detail that I think, I think that you're talking about. Yeah, 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 so it's market coupling based yeah. and the, those things. Yeah. <coughs> Hand off, more questions, anything? I saw one more question over here somewhere, right? Yeah, uh, I think my, my question went kind of in the same direction. Uh, so it's about, uh, are you aware of power models and power simulations, I think? I think power simulations is doing kind of a similar thing, but also with a bit more infrastructure and physical modeling behind it. But yeah, it's yeah, kind of the probably. same question. Yeah, this is um, um, ML, M MILP, so mixed energy linear programming uh, modeling, uh, not physics modeling. Um, it's also not really... Uh, market modeling, which is another type of modeling, and we don't consider it simulation, which they also do power system simulations, but we're doing, uh, yeah, optimization. <laughs> so I hope that's what, yeah, in the direction you're talking about. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, thank Lauren with another round of applause.